A woman with long auburn hair wears a black fleece with a white coast fossil's insignia embroidered on it. As she walks along a beach, she looks down. Local paleontologist Megan Jacobs spends much of her spare time hunting for fossils along the Isle of Wight coastline. Megan pauses to lift something up off the sand. In the winter of 2021, she made an amazing discovery. On the beach, Megan speaks to the camera. Caption reads, Megan Jacobs, paleontologist. Me and my dad go down on the beach in the winter almost every day. And we scour the area looking for bones sticking out of the mud, bones on the beach. And my dad and I started to find bones all coming from one area. And when they start to add up, you sort of think there's, there is something going on here. These are all the same size, you know, same preservation. And we started to have a poke around and found that they're all coming out of the same bed. It was really exciting. Um, so we were kind of accumulating it on the kitchen table, um, much to my, I think, to my mum's disgust. And it was the tibia, the big complete bone that we have. It all came out in chunks. And it was, we were sat there looking at them all and they slowly started to click together to form this th big bone. It's, it's a lot of time and dedication put in. It's not sort of wandering around and you find a dinosaur stuck in the cliff like you see on documentaries. Um, it's a, you, you have to come down every day and it's chunks of bone daily that will slowly stick together. And over the last two winters, it's just, it's more and more's come out um, to the point where we've got quite a complete skeleton. A bird's eye view of Megan as she walks along the beach, following the baseline of the towering cliffs. Interested in learning more about her find, Megan has contacted the Natural History Museum in London. Dinosaur researcher Dr. Susanna Maidman has come to inspect it. A woman with short brown hair wearing a grey fleece speaks to the camera. Caption reads, Susanna Maidman, museum scientist. There are a lot of fossil collectors uh, here on the Isle of Wight and some of them like to keep the specimens um, in private collections. Some of them donate them to museums, some of them sell them. Um, we are on a fairly regular basis contacted by people who find fossils um, to see whether we want to acquire them. Um, it doesn't happen super regularly, but it's always really, really exciting when it does. Megan leads Dr. Maidman, two additional experts, across her garden towards a collection of fossilised bones, which are all laid out on her patio. Joined by dinosaur experts Professor Paul Barrett and PhD student Jeremy Lockwood, Dr. Maidman is visiting Megan's house to take a closer look at her find. Dr. Maidman surveys the specimens. Oh wow, there's lots of it. Yeah. What would be wonderful to find here is a, a beautiful, um, semi-complete specimen of a, a new type of Iguanodontian, um, but it might be that we have um, another representative of something that we already know, but that would be fantastic as well, because actually we don't have loads of these types of dinosaur, and certainly um, ones where we've got the bones um, associated with each other, so we kind of um, have them in the right order in the ground, um, are much, much rarer, uh, and they're the, real, uh, the really important specimens that allow us to understand uh, much more about the biology of these animals. Megan. Um, it's nice to get an expert's opinion on what the bones are and what they think it is. So I've had experience with dinosaurs, but I haven't got that in-depth knowledge um, to be able to compare everything in my head. So it's really nice to get a sort of a second, third, fourth opinion on all the bones and get them all identified. I can make it into two or three things in my head, actually. <laughs> None of which are right, I think. <laughs> it, uh, could it be wrist? Is it calcanium or something? I was going to say well, that, uh, whether it's the it looks like a, ta a, a tarsal or a carpal, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. Dr. Maidman picks up a section of spine. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> what is so what we have here is um, a partial skeleton of an Iguanodontian dinosaur. We've got some um, bones from the neck region and from the back um, and a bunch from the tail. Um, we've got parts of all the limb bones um, and we've got even a tiny little bit of skull with some teeth. Um, so it's really, really exciting. It's a really nice um, partial skeleton um, and lots and lots of parts of the skeleton are represented, which is really good because it helps us um, really assess whether it's similar to something that we already know or, or whether it's a little bit different. The experts begin to reassemble the dinosaur skeleton across the patio. So what's your plan for this material? Um, so he's going to go to the museum. Okay. We don't need a dinosaur, basically. <laughs> it's a storage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and if Jeremy can describe it, then even better. Perfect. Okay. Um, so to our museum. Yeah, to us. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. It's amazing. Yeah, really good. Really exciting. Dr. Maidment, 
Well, Megan has said that she would like uh, the specimen to come to the Natural History Museum. Um, she has permission from the landowners to actually finish excavating the skeleton because there's still quite a lot in the cliffs. Now, what happens here in the Isle of Wight, of course, is that as the sea erodes the cliffs, more and more of these skeletons come out. So the collectors have to keep going back week after week after week and, and collecting material, particularly after big storms in the winter. So um, Megan will be going back and uh, getting the rest of the specimen, um, hopefully uh, this autumn or this winter, um, and then it will it will come to the museum in due course. We're never in too much of a rush, of course, because these animals have been dead for 135 million years. So it doesn't really matter if um, we don't get it to the museum collections until next year. Quite nice that um, sort of after all the hard work we've put in collecting this specimen and preparing it and putting it all together, that it is going to go somewhere like to the Natural History Museum um, to be researched and for future generations to enjoy. It's nice going to be like seeing your name on a museum label. It's a, it's a great feeling. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this, then let us know in the comments below and keep watching for more from this series. As always, make sure you subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with the latest fascinating content from the Natural History Museum. Credits are displayed on a narrow purple rectangle on the left-hand side. Film Duncan Gregory, NHM Studios. Research and voiceover Emily Osteloff. Contributors Megan Jacobs, Susanna Maidman. Music Audio Network. With thanks to the National Trust Enterprises Limited. The Crown Estate Commissioners, Lobster Locations Limited, Knight Frank. Text at the bottom of the column reads, Copyright owned by the Trustees of the Natural History Museum London. On the right hand side, the Natural History Museum logo is displayed consisting of the letters NHM repeated in a concentric circular formation.